Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk about the feeding part of the maintenance. That seems to be of interest to many. Feeding an aquarium seems simple enough. Buy a jar of flake food and toss some in, right? Actually, that really isn't a good idea for a variety of reasons. Hopefully, you will find the following information helpful for your own specific needs. Essentially, we would have to answer two fundamental questions: what you feed and by how much. Foods come in many forms, and they serve different purposes. For a fully stocked mixed reef, I feed pellets, frozen, powdered, liquid, and live food to the tank on a daily basis. I'm a strong advocate of heavy feeding. If you want to see healthy growths of all tank inhabitants, a large input and a large output system is definitely recommended. Before getting down to details, I would like to give you some updates on the recent development of the tank. I found this goni opera one morning, knocked off by a snail or an urchin, and、I、fell off onto this LV opera. I immediately separated them, but the LV opera was already covered with a white slime. I worried that I might lose part of the colony, but thank God. It recovered in no time. That's the most wonderful tenacity of life that I have constantly observed across the tank. Another interesting observation is that this hermit crab was found on the back of a tuxedo urchin. Although it might be able to escape the trap at night, I didn't want to risk starving the hermit to death. Saving it from the urchin was a no-brainer, and I was happy to see it feeding on the sand bed again. Finally, I introduced a carnation tree coral to the aquarium, temporarily put on the frag rack, and added two pieces of Montipora frags, leaf plate, and a bird nest to the center of the tank. Although it was very unfortunate that a tuxedo urchin broke the leaf plate from its frag plug at night and carried the frag at its back or over the tank. Causing several edges of the leaf plate to be burnt. The majority of the tissues remained intact, and I believe it would get well soon. This was a hard life lesson to learn, but it may be the most important of all. Life can change in an instant. Make sure you appreciate what you have while you still have it. Nothing in your life is guaranteed to be there tomorrow, including those you love. Well, let's get back to today's topic. I have this Eham Auto Feeder with feeding station, running four times a day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. I load the feeder with pally food that comes in various sizes, including Hikari Marine S, Seaweed Extreme, and Shrimp Cuisine. They are nutrition-rich food for mid and bottom dwellers, and are welcomed by all carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores. Pally food tends to float on the water surface, where it spreads and disperses. But any food that is not found or eaten immediately will disappear into the overflow. Fish that swim in the water column, or shrimps that dwell at the bottom, can hardly catch pellets on the surface. That's where the feeding station comes handy. Pally food will sink before they drift away. Has minimizing the chance of getting to the overflow. Moreover, as fish and shrimps are already waiting underneath, most pellets are actually well eaten before the rest begin to disperse. An important aspect to consider in day-to-day -day use of the feeding station is that you need at least one top-dwelling fish in the tank, such as sardine or rabbit fish. To constantly clean protein films inside the food chamber, as that part of the water surface is not taken care of by the surface skimmer. If the protein films get thick, pellets won't sink and will eventually pollute the chamber. Although pellets are nutritious, they are not tasty enough to excite the entire tank. You need frozen foods. I use hikari frozen krill, brine shrimp, and mysis. Together with ocean nutrition, fish eggs. 
All of them are meaty foods sold in bubble packs, where a cube can be used one by one. Frozen foods should be thawed prior to being added to the tank, and is easily dissolved if left in a small cup filled with some tank water. Within five to ten minutes, it is ready to use. I feed the tank one cube each in the morning and at night. Please note that pouring in quite a bit of food into your tank at one time usually assures that all your fish will get a meal versus feeding in smaller amounts. The more active or aggressive fish will get the majority of the food, and the timid ones will miss out if you feed in tiny portions. If you have enough mid dwellers, frozen foods. Are likely to be consumed in an instant. You can rest assured that no food would be left uneaten, even though the tank looks messy initially. As I want the food to flow through my entire tank, I always leave the pumps and power heads on. An interesting observation is that all the fish will queue up awaiting the frozen foods around the feeding time every day. This makes me wonder. How smart the fish are, and how good their memory is. Powdered foods can be used to feed corals and microfauna. One thing to know is that you can overfeed with these foods, causing massive algae outbreaks. So use these foods judiciously. I feed the tank once a day with a spoon of TM Phyton, a spoon of TM Zooten, half a spoon of Sierra Micron, and a spoon of Hikari Corallific Delight. Mix them with some tank water, blend and wait for them to be fully dissolved, and pour to the tank where the flow is the strongest. You shall stop feeding powdered foods in case nutrients are running out of control. It takes some time for the micro creatures to proliferate and for the algae reactor to develop nutrients export capabilities. Liquid foods are rich in amino acids, which powdered foods usually come without in a direct way. Moreover, phytoplankton and zooplankton in liquid forms are less polluting than powdered forms. Brightwell phyto and zoo products are not required to keep in the freezer and yet stays in liquid form. I feed to the tank once a day, two milliliter Brightwell phyto. 2 milliliter Brightwell Zuo and 4 milliliter Red Sea AB Plus late at night when coral polyp extension is at its greatest. Powdered and liquid foods will result in good pod growth in your reef for some fish such as rasses, mandarins, and pipefish to feed upon. Moreover, phytoplankton is critical in Goniopterus long-term survival. When feeding. I've always turned off the protein skimmer for half an hour each in the morning and at night to keep the food in the water longer. In terms of live foods, I hatch brine shrimp every day. Offering newly hatched baby brine shrimp to your livestock can be quite nutritious, as the yolk sac is still attached at that point. If you feed the baby brine shrimp some phytoplankton six hours before you harvest them. They will be gut loaded, and provide even more nutrition to your reef. Some NPS corals, such as sunflowers, also like baby brine shrimp. Hatching brine shrimp is easy, as hatchlings often come out in 36 hours rather than 24. You will probably need two containers to use interchangeably. Just remember to cover the containers with lids, or the water will evaporate. Cause salinity to rise substantially and result in a lower hatch rate. A special mention has to be made of anemones. If you want the anemones to grow fast, you can perform target feeding several times a week. I never feed them in order to avoid frequent manual fragging, but they still grow with wild exuberance, at least more so than other inhabitants in the tank. I'll conclude this episode by sharing an interesting symbiotic relationship between fish and the cleaner shrimp. Fish, especially this green chromis, will always look for the cleaner shrimp to help clean the remaining food in its mouth 
right after feeding. As a result, the cleaner shrimp has set up a cleaning station near the toadstool ladder, waiting for its clients to come by. With this symbiotic relationship in place, the cleaner shrimp seldom harasses corals or anemones during times of feeding, as it knows that the food will be delivered to the door automatically, given that it is not good at preying in the water column after all. These are the feeding part of the maintenance that I've been practicing. What are your favorite feeding routines? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you there. If you like the video, please give a like. I'll really appreciate that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get the latest updates. And thanks for watching.